Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to do my world's 2024 predictions. Um, over here we have who I think is going to get out of play-ins, who the top eight will be, and then the winner of the tournament um, because it's all random draw, etc. I mean, of course, we have ideas with pools and things like that, but in the grand scheme of things, it is matchup based to go from top eight to winner. We could have our two best teams hypothetically facing off in quarters and it'd be what it is. Over here are the pick that I feel like take some thought everything else in my opinion is literally throwing darts play, playing pin the tail on the donkey doing whatever the fuck you want to do and however you want to describe it but guessing how many pentas there's going to be at worlds or how many what what kind of drake will be mo like we we can all agree that that's kind of um you know that's that's fun but it doesn't take any thought and i'm not gonna go over it so for the pickums, I have on here some champ stuff, players, and then teams. Um, so as far as champs are concerned, the champion I feel like that's going to appear in the most roles is um, we're going to go with um, hmm. we're going to go with uh, Maokai, I guess. Could be picked in three roles. We're just trying to pick something in three. Maybe there's a world where we see, um, you know, a Senna being played by a support and then a Maokai being played by the AD carry, um, just, you know, instead of vice versa. I mean, maybe, but otherwise, you know, you're just picking something that could be played in three roles, right? I mean, could pick an AD carry being picked in mid in the in, in top lane um, as another option, but that's how I view it. Uh, most picked champion... I think it's going to be um, Kaysante. Oh, I don't want to do it in that color. Kaysante. Um, specifically because people really don't like Kaysante, so he'll be picked the most because they think that Riot has some conspiracy to make Kaysante be picked the most, so we're going to go with that. You know, go with the conspiracy theorist. Feed the delusion. Banned. The most banned champion i think is going to be rumble i still think rumble is just going to be banned um beyond belief and uh oh shoot not really be picked stepped on my stepped on my uh light light cord there unplugged it deaths which champion is going to die the most well I'll have you know, I think it's going to be uh, Rel. I think Rel's going to die the most. You say, oh, well, she's nerfed or this or that. Uh, Rel's still being picked quite a bit if you look at the support picks on 14-18 thus far in at least America Challengers, and that's really all we can go off of. And Rel goes in and dies a lot, so that's kind of the thing. Win rates. Um, I think it's going to be Ari. I think once people start picking Ari, it's going to get very strong. We're going to have the good players picking it, and then it get banned out. And, uh, well, that'll be that. Now, in terms of who's playing the most champions at this event, I'm going to go with... Um, um, Caria. I mean, if you missed my video yesterday, I think he's... You know, he plays the most different champions. I mean, we, we went over it, right? Shen, Zilli, and Lee Sen, just three examples of crazy crap he pulled out in playoffs. The guy's willing to play pretty much anything. Most kills in a game. If this is the first time you're watching, you're going to be confused. But we're going Shogun with this. Whether he gets out of play-ins or not, I think he's going to put up a big score. Um, KDA, we're going to go Gumayushi. Actually, that's not what we're going to go with. We're going with Pays. I, I remembered. I, I The reason why I thought Guma was because I told somebody Guma today on the Discord. Uh, but I'm going Pays. Coming into this event, Pays has one of the highest KDAs from playoffs. And I think Gen G are going to go pretty far here. And uh, Pays ends up with the highest KDA playing weak side. Most first bloods. We're going to go um, Peanut. And then pentakills, 
We're going to go, who's going to get a pentakill? I'm going Shogun again. He had a penta, his only world's appearance. Why not go Shogun again? Maybe he gets it against Mad Lions Koi off the rip. Shortest game. Um, so these are some team ones now. I'm not doing the who, what minor region team gets the farthest because I think I'm going to answer that in my predictions over here. Um, as well as winner, I mean, of course, I'm going to have over here. So shortest game will be BLG. I believe BLG is going to just beat the crap out of some Western team and win in like maybe 22 minutes or less. Steals, T1, because Guma is blessed with the ability to steal. And then T1 also most champions played because going into this event, they have the most champions played. This is not favoritism. If you actually look at it, uh, you know, across 25 games, they're the ones that are playing the most stuff um, by quite a bit. So that's T1, you know, appearing a couple times on this board. Now, play-ins. Who's getting out of play-ins? Well, easiest is PSG. They are better than everybody else. And then after that is, is um, GAM. In my opinion, the top side of the rift for GAM is very strong. After that is going to be 100 Thieves. So although I say that I believe um, I believe that um, this is the weakest three seed we've seen in quite a while in the LCS and LEC. Uh, Quid is a big X factor. River has gotten out of um, play-ins before on teams that you may not have think really needed could could get out. Um, and, and those two by themselves, River and Quid, I think can get it done um, and and pull them out of the uh, out of this. Now the fourth team is tough because like partially Soft Bangkok's gaming. Nobody on that team actually screams to me that they are getting out. Like Dasher maybe could 1v9 and steal a game or something, but I don't see them getting out. Mad Lions Koi. Supa and Alvaro. If Mirwin could carry them out. Frescawi is a glaring hole, but Alioya, I mean, I would say he's capable of getting out, but historically, actually, he does struggle to get out. So that does, I mean, he, he doesn't get out all the time. So there is that. Um... And that is pressure on them, I believe. You know, do they want to be, once again, that team that didn't get out as a major region um, squad? And then you have, like, um, Vi uh, Vikings, Shogun, and BA. Are they the ones that are going to do it by themselves? Because the top side of the rip for Vikings leaves a lot on the table. Uh, Katie and Mid needs to do something with the gold they're given. Payne. I mean... Is this the year? I mean, uh, Rainbow Seven, does Summit get it done? So, um, in the end, and what is not very predictable, we're going Mad Lions Koi. You know, Mirwin and El Yoya, Mirwin gets it done, he gets them out of, out of plans. Um, Frescawi struggles, but they still get out. Supa and Elvaro figure it out, and, and, and they get out of plans. Much to my chagrin, because I would like Viking Esports to get out, because I'd be able to see Shogun more, but it is what it is. Um, just pleasure to watch him play League of Legends. Now, top eight. Who's going to get out of Swiss stage? Well, we're going to start with the easy one. So, um, in no particular order, Gen G. Uh, BLG. We got um, HLE. Top Esports. T1. So, so far I've got five. And this is where I have questions. Actually, I have, I have some questions, but I have two teams that I think 
I don't have questions about. At least I think that can get out and it's going to be interesting. So G2, get out, get to top eight. And D plus. Eamon gets it done, gets D plus out. Showmaker can get it done. I mean, honestly, D plus certainly can do it. They just beat T1. They're certainly capable. G2, right the ship. Don't make the mistakes they did last year. And they also get out. But you're missing LNG and Weibo on this board, right? So you're saying to yourself, okay, well, are we going LNG or Weibo? We got LNG, Weibo, PSG, Team Liquid for the last spot. PSG plays the cleanest brand of League of Legends of the four. Team Liquid plays a really nice macro game. In my opinion, Weibo play very sloppy. LNG and probably are the fourth team on that list. Like, I, I really don't... Too many distractions going on for LNG the last couple weeks. I really don't think LNG gets out of uh, Swiss. I think there's too many distractions. So... It becomes a situation where is it is it going to be Weibo or is it going to be a PSG or a G or a, a Team Liquid? And with that in mind, what do I want to do here? We're going Team Liquid. I don't think Junjia can do enough. I don't know if Maple really takes advantage of APA. And I don't, I mean, if if Maple can't take advantage of APA, I think the bot lane duo of Eon Core JJ, Betty Woody will be competitive. I, I give it to TL. I give mid lane to PSG. Jungle is to PSG, but top lane is to Impact. So, I mean, we're going TL. I think you could go either way. I've been singing PSG's praises, saying I think they're going to go to quarterfinals, and I really want them to. But I kind of just talked myself into TL. So these eight are the teams that I think get out of Swiss. Not in, I mean, I guess it was kind of in a particular order. I mean, I went from the guarantees to kind of like, what are we doing here with eighth? But um, I could make an argument that HLE is up here, BLG is up here, top esports, whatever. Um, and then after that, who do I think is going to win? Well, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm going top esports here. Um, in the end, if this meta goes the way as expected with Silas and Akali and Ari and um, things like that, I think Cream's going to really step up and, and be a big difference maker for top esports. Tian is world class. 369 is the best top laner in the world, can play anything and offers them a lot of options. Jackie Love Mako coming into this event, I think are the best bot lane duo. Um, so there's that and, um, big Big time part of Mako. But top esports I, I had in January. I'm not going to, you know, waver now and then after the tournament with top esports win. Say, oh, well, I did predict them when I, you know, gave up on them. Because once you give up on them, those predictions are, are no longer valid in my opinion. But um, just going to keep it going with top esports. Because I think you can make a case that any of these top five teams here could win. HLE play a clean game of League of Legends, as we saw against Gen G. Gen G on paper are just as strong as BLG, and either team could just win outright by being that good. Uh, top esports, if the meta fits them, and I think it might, they win. If the meta had fit T1, they had the potential to win. So, um, shoot. That's how I feel about the predictions for Worlds 2024. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And hope to see you again tomorrow.